Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! We're glad you can join us today to hear the good news about Jesus joining us on our journey. Jesus always walks with us. This is such great news. Indeed, we are blessed to know God's love and grace for us each and every day. May we continue to know that Jesus just doesn't show up and hang out and make things just eh, okay. Jesus actually journeys with us in our time of trial, in our time of death, in our time of difficulty. May we know this gift of life forever. Today we are blessed to have Tina Horrigan from Berry County Cares as she shares about the ministry they do in servicing those who are poor and are, or, or in need. We hope that we can learn lots from her and you'll get to hear her later in our uh, live on tape. It will not be there for the sermon only. Wanted to also share with you that a week from today, we have one service only at 10 a.m. We're going to be blessed with a bell choir and we're looking forward to hearing them. Wanted to also share with you that Bishop Satterley has uh, announced that Pastor Christina Wright has accepted the synodical call to be our assistant to the bishop. May we know that she's going to be a pastor to us too in ministry here at Grace Lutheran Church and throughout the Northwest Lower Michigan Synod. Wanted to also let you know that spring flower sale is $6 each. There's some patients and we have also the gift of beauty of geraniums available. Order forms are online through the Gracegram. So you look in the Gracegram, print it, and then send it in. Or you can come by the church anytime and fill out an order form. That concludes all the verbal announcements. May we be blessed with our time of worship. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. You might say, hey, we have a lot of flowers today. We do. We thank the Rose family for sharing these beautiful arrangements with us. The lilies, of course, are leftovers from Easter, but the rest of the flowers, including the ones on the Oregon console, are from Jeanette Rose's funeral. Wanted to share with you today that it's a long road that the disciples travel today and the hardship that they have. May we know that Jesus enters our struggles, our times of tri trial, and walks with us each, each and every day. Wanted to draw your attention that most of the hymns, if they're not in the actual worship folder, are taken from the blue hymnal today, so just be aware of that. I invite us to arise in body or spirit for the Easter good news found on page two. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia! I shall not die, but live. And, and declare the words of the Lord.
people of God, given new life through the gospel of Christ, and enlightened by the Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And also with you. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We read responsibly from Psalm 116. <clears throat> I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. And then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all his the good things God has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will 
will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. A reading from 1 Peter's. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile, you know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but is revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart, you have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring Word of God. Word of God, Word of life. Thanks, Thanks God. God. gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him, and he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place where these, here in these last few days? And he asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us they were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all the things the prophets have declared. 
Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all of the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he opened the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Risen Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. My friends, we come again enshrined with beautiful color, again with butterflies, but I wanted to focus more on this white cloth that we see this pure white cloth as a wrapping of new life. Many will wear black for a funeral. Few will wear color or white, but we celebrate with white today because we understand that to be the sign of new life. We have the promise that Jesus comes to us in our hurt and in our pain, giving us new life. May we wrap ourselves up in this new life, knowing God's love for us all. Let us pray. Dear God, help us see your care. Help us see your love that you always share with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming. See you next week. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! In today's Gospel, we read about a road trip taken by some disciples. This is one long road trip. By long, I don't mean how many miles. Many of us have walked seven-ish miles a day. We've got our Fitbits logging in our steps or whatever other device to prove it. Today's long trip between Jerusalem and Emmaus is because of the distance between the we had hoped at the very beginning of the gospel and the Lord is risen indeed at the end of our gospel reading. It seems like forever, the longest trip ever. Are we there yet? Even though we have been told the resurrection has happened, do we really believe it? Yet, if we are honest, that's where most of us are. A lot of the time, we are somewhere in between distress and belief, between disillusionment and acceptance, between dashed hopes and promises fulfilled. We know this truth already, of course. We felt it last week, that betweenness of the power of death and the power of life. Not an easy place to be, especially when we lean toward wanting the resurrection to resolve questions of faith rather than making our doubts even more apparent. Hmm. We hear this very long conversation in today's Gospel, and I cannot help but think about what happens between the start and the finish 
And what happens, of course, in the middle of a conversation, Jesus shows up. But wait, that's sometimes an all too easy promise that we hear in this gospel, that Jesus shows up in our doubt and our disappointment, that Jesus is present in our grief, that Jesus meets us where we are. I don't doubt that Jesus does just that all of the time. But what exactly does Jesus do when Jesus shows up and interrupts this conversation in progress? Well, he doesn't just join them and take over, interrupting the conversation and changing the direction. Jesus gets them to articulate what they experienced. What things, says Jesus, and the response of the disciples is right on. Where have you been these last few days, dude? Living under a rock? Yet the question, what things, leads the disciples to describe the things which they have to do. To name the hurt. To name the fear. To name the doubt. And then Jesus picks it up from there and takes it home. That's what Jesus does, you see. Jesus wants us to know today, not just that he will show up, but that he will show up and give the opportunity to speak the truth of our pain, help us make sense of it all, or at least some of it. Help us get to a place where we can see beyond just what's happened. Help us move from we had hoped to suddenly the Lord has risen indeed and realizing I need to hear this good news this week. It was not enough to hear that Jesus will be there in my sadness and grief. Sometimes that is enough of a promise, but all too often it's not. And I think that's the case for these disciples. Jesus doesn't just show up and say, Hey, I'm here. There, there. All is okay. The disciples are not just having a bad day. The one in whom they had placed their trust, their hope for a kingdom of justice, their assurance for freedom from oppression, they just got a witness of his execution by the system from which they had hoped Jesus would set them free. The one who they believed would fulfill the promises of Scripture was dead. Sometimes the hearing that Jesus is present is enough, but then there are those times when we find ourselves in the space between loss of hope and renewed conviction. We need to know that Jesus will do more than just show up. We need to hear that Jesus will do something about it. We need to believe that when Jesus meets us on the road, from we had hoped to the Lord is risen indeed, it will be more than just going along for the ride. Lately, Realizing that Jesus journeys with us and listens to our burdens and pains seems more real than the resurrection solves everything statement made by many. That's the danger of post-resurrection life, that the resurrection itself becomes a salve or solution for issues that it was never meant to address. Yes, the resurrection is God's answer to death, Yes, the resurrection makes it possible to see new life in our lives now. Yes, the resurrection is the promise of a life beyond this one. But that's not the same as insisting that it's an easy resolution to the death we experience every day. 
the death of a relationship, the death of what we thought was the perfect job, the death of innocence, the death of choice, the death of freedom, the death of science, the death of justice, the death of civility, the death of respect, the death of truth, the death of a slain young woman for going down the wrong driveway for goodness sake. My friends, these are all real, very real deaths. And the resurrection doesn't take these deaths away. We don't get to say, nor should we say, thankfully we have the resurrection that solves everything. And that then conveniently erases we had hoped. For God walks with us in our times of hopelessness. That's where true hope lies. For God walks with us in our times of death. God walks with us in our time of pain. The road to Emmaus shows us that when the snares of death encompass us, when the pangs of Sheol lay hold on us, when we suffer distress and anguish, the Lord will indeed save our lives by walking the road with us, yes, but by also asking us, what thing? Which means that then the road might actually get us somewhere. And that somewhere, eventually, is the place where we recognize and start to live out the life-changing presence of the resurrected Christ. We, too, can truly have new life. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
may sit through you for prayer. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Ever-present God, you make yourself known in the breaking of the bread and in the bonds of community. Reveal yourself to us in the faces of all we meet. Strengthened by your body and blood, let us boldly live out your good news. Along with Bishops Elizabeth and Craig, Assistants David and Christina, our Synod Companions, Zion Lutheran Church Cadillac, Country Church Dowling, Minister of Music Cindy and Pastor Ken. Hear us, O God. You give us life. As we know you in the breaking of the bread, we know you in the grains of the field and the flowing waters. Care for the earth you lovingly create. Strengthen those who safeguard threatened land and water. Hear us, O God. Give us the life. You are the authority to whom we dedicate our lives. Help us keep the needs of those most vulnerable at the forefront of our community. Move us to care for any who are disregarded or oppressed. Be with those who safeguard the world, including Parker Stansel, Cody and Marina Crawford, Cynthia Rudisil, Joel Taggart, Julia Arrett, and Seth Donkey. Hear us, O oh God. You give us the life. Mothering God, you feed and comfort those who hunger. Open the hearts of those who hoard resources and lead them to share your abundance. We pray for anyone hungering for your comforting presence this day, especially Veronica Barson, Bob Bolton, Sharon Bolton, Cherie Clements, Pat Wales Depew, Bob and Bonnie Errett, Amanda Haddix, Katie Holskin, Martha Mizak, Lisa Nuremberg, Corinna Palmer, Carl Schessel, Al Throop, Erica Wood, and for all healthcare workers who care for them. Hear us, O oh God. You pour out your love on those who are oppressed. Support and comfort anyone who is marginalized by gender or sexuality and those whose stories are not believed. Form this community to listen faithfully and speak honestly in our ministry together. Hear us, O oh God. You give us our life. We remember with thanksgiving all your beloved saints. As you have raised them to eternal life, abide with us in your promise of resurrection. You may offer your own prayers. We lift up the family of Jeanette Rose as they celebrated her life yesterday in word, story, song, and fellowship. And finally, in turn, her. We also looked up the family of Carly Overhaul as they celebrate a final time of celebration with her at a graveside service this afternoon. We ask for your peace in the world today in places of war, like Ukraine and Sudan, and in places of conflict such as Taiwan and China and here in the U.S. Be with those who have, at the hands of abusers experienced theft. May they know in this child prevention, abuse prevention time this month. Be lifted up, listened to, and cared for.
Strengthen us with the eternal peace of your promises. Hear us, O oh God. You give, give us new life. life. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanksgiving found on page 10 of our worship service folder. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow the way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth and the all of creation and the host of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn.
gift us with the body of Christ broken for us. Risen, Risen to new life, life with you, send us now to bear your healing love into the wounded world. In the name of our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. A few mission minutes to share with you this day. Carleen Overholtz, Graveside Service, is at Freeport Cemetery at 2 p.m. Grace grams are available. Please save us. I believe we're up to now 68 cents, or maybe it's still 63. But anyway, it's still above 60 cents. Way too much. But that's the way life is. I am like for the Temple Talk, Tina Horrigan, at this time. Tina Morgan, Executive Director of Berry County Cares, also a fellow music teacher with Cindy Olson. So I feel I've been amongst family in many ways and with Pastor Ken. Thank you for inviting me. Um, and thank you for putting up with me sitting down. I actually am a praise band drummer. That way I get to sit so my body parts don't stand up and down real well. So thank you for putting up with that. But I come and, you know, I'm, I think about saying a few words and I always, when I'm introduced that way, I go, oh, because um, we have all the words you want, Tina, you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a few and then a few, I guess, but very County Cares, just to kind of reunite the uh, basicness, started out as uh, Love in the Name of Christ with Reverend Reed in 1983. We are still that. He did the name change in 2014, did not have affiliation costs uh, incurring and taken out of the county, so all monies would stay in the county, and thus the name change. But then, of course, the change of him leaving us uh, not only in service um, in 2015, but then on this earth and going to happen in uh, a year ago. So we all miss him, and uh, indeed, we keep going. And the idea is to keep going because the needs are so great. You know, I sometimes people say, well, what was I going to say? And um, I asked Dad for the words, and he certainly supplied them already this morning in this service. It was just so right there about different deaths. I wrote to, I wrote to Elias um, to follow him, to testify for him, to give for him, to give hope in deaths. And death comes in so many forms. Um, so thank you for such a wonderful the word of God um, just to match what I'm here to share. And you all share with Berry County Cares every month. First of all, thank you for that, that you're giving. As Pastor uh, said, uh, even 60 cents, praise God. Um, it is unfortunate though, as, as I say that also, that people who come to us need a lot more than that. Um, your giving every month would go, it goes toward two families getting personal and household items um, once every 60 days. So that means basics of toilet paper. Um, yes, we get more than one roll if you're more than one household. Um, uh, and a cleaning products, deodorant, and so forth, toothpaste. Um, if persons get monies through um, a, a bridge card that's called through Department of Human Service, that does not cover those items they also have gone up in cost. And so your giving does supply that for two households a month, thank you. We also have other requests that are done though also. Um, we of course, I say of course, but many people think of us as one food pantry. We actually watch over all the services of five food pantries in this county. Four of them actively, one of them with TBC so people don't duplicate. We simply coordinate that. Uh, we used to require requests on um, uh, income, uh, Proofs. When COVID happened, uh, we waived that and continue to waive that for personal care items or food pantry requests. And we have found that to work just fine. If people uh, think they're abusing something, they aren't. God knows. And we just have a way of saying, well, here's one box of cereal, and they're just thrilled, you know, or, or whatever else. There's just ways that God works it out. Um, we also um, have. 
other items people aren't aware of besides services, and that is we work with the WIC program having formula. It's very expensive. So we have that. We have diapers that we work with and them often on that, uh, with Family Support Center, and one of the agencies receiving that. Uh, some baby food and, and on and on, some continents for our older needs. Um, that very expensive again, so if we have them, we, we certainly offer them. Um, the other four areas of need uh, are housing, which is not going down. The requests for that are every day in our office, that are utilities. For housing, that average is about asking for approximately $1,000 per situation. Um, for utilities, about $500. I put it at about an average. Um, so, uh, for housing, for utilities, food, which I mentioned, and transportation. We work with, in our church of faith community, uh, also helping repair cars or services known to help that, and those costs certainly are not going down, or gas. We have uh, gas cards for proven situations or hardship uh, sometimes, it depends on every situation. Uh, we have a bicycle ministry. Uh, we have voucher system with the transit, so even in that tiering, um, we have that outreach. So within our small walls, uh, God works great things. So, um, uh, and uh, the, the, the main thing I, I would truly say that we're blessed to do is offer the power of prayer. Um, every day, people come and they're broke, they're, they're broken on that road. They just, the, the hope is gone, and it may not be even what they're asking for. Many times there's a multiple of other needs that are not being expressed or even aware by them. We're so glad, so glad that God knows and that he is our, our boss. <laughs> I'm so glad. Um, and that we are able as a faith organization to offer Bibles uh, devotions for all ages um, and situations and in prayer openly and in which we do uh, we could not do it without our Lord that's just all there is to it and so uh, again thank you for the giving that this congregation does the love that gets your prayers continued and if able perhaps that giving more uh, to help in these other situations that again are not less these days and we see only growing so, um, again, thank you. We are pleased to be a partner with Berry County Cares, of course, and Tina answers my questions all the time, and I'm so thankful for her help and partnership. Wanted to remind you that we have one service next week, 10 a.m. Please don't show up at 8. Oh, you can. I won't be here even probably at that point next week. Uh, a message from Bishop Satterley. What? Well, we have a new uh, assistant to the bishop, so we're thrilled. Uh, she won't start until, uh, as it says, mid-July, but it's great news. Um, she helped those of you who have attended Senate Assembly for the last two years over Zoom, she was the coordinator of all of that mess. Um, and the first year, not so good. Second year, just fine. So um, that's what's going to happen in her time of the beginning. The first year, not so good. But the rest of the time, it'll be awesome. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing her in action. Christina is just a wonderful pastor for us and a partner. Uh, there are the spring flower order sale um, or sale and the order forms are there in your worship folder. So if you would like to order some flowers, that would be a blessing to us. That concludes all the verbal announcements unless there are others to share. Just one is that uh, next Sunday also is a potluck. So yes. So, sheet up there on the bulletin board. Thank so you, Bill. We can get it. And we have lots of food already, so we, we will have an abundance of food. So please do plan on coming. PK, I'll make a quick note. Yeah. I'm going to piggyback on Tina's talk. Um, 
you're probably well aware of the noisy offering that we have each month, but we also have Barry County Cares as part of our regular budget. So we are giving and we are giving more and the need, as Tina said, is always there and sometimes it's quite a big need. So thank you in the multiple ways that you give here at Grace. Come back next week, we'll hear about our Congregational Care Outreach Program. Um, not Congregational Care in the sense of Congregational Care, but the care we give as an outreach. Sorry, I gave you a, I, I moved by the body language, I gave a scare. But our Congregational Care we do as an outreach. Next week we hear from Mike Kemper. I invite us to arise and body our spirit for our blessing that is printed on page 15. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.